What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Filming in Progress with Isai and our new special guest. Please introduce yourself. We let everyone introduce themselves. So. Got you. Uh, my name's Naomi Chafee, and I'm an actress and stunt woman located in KC. Stunt Hell yeah. Man. Stunt woman. Yeah. I have so many questions. Oh, God. Hell I can't yeah. wait. I've been, I've been waiting for this episode, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like, um, we're geeked. I hope you know yeah. this. I'm pumped. Um, no, so like, tell us, tell us, tell us about a little bit about yourself, real quick. Like, how did you, what, what brought you into this world we call the film industry? So I started out doing theater. So I'm, I'm from North Dakota. So okay. I moved to Kansas City like a year ago. So I grew up doing like theater, and I like did some modeling and commercials and stuff. Um, and then when I moved to Kansas City, I like got into film right away, just because like there wasn't any theater happening because of COVID. Um, and there was no film in North Dakota. Like, no one's doing yeah, nothing like, there. Like, like, what? They, there, is, there is no film office or anything like that in North Dakota? There was one, but then they got they shut down. They just got shut down. Oh, yeah. See, there was a... Everyone's it was, shut down. It, it, was, it was really bad. <laughs> I didn't know you were from North Dakota. Yeah. I, I honestly didn't know you just moved here a year ago. Like, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. When you, when you did pop on the scene, I was just like, who the hell is they open? But, like... <laughs> She's obviously yeah. been around, so yeah. I'm not I come in like, quick I'll, and I come I'll, in hard. I'll, I'll meet her when I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So wait, so North Dakota, like what did you you go to college there too? Or yeah, okay. I um went to Bismarck State College. I did two years okay. there, so I got an associates in like theater performance. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah. So you rather so Naomi the her first, was that your first PA job that I gave you? Yes. Yeah. So Naomi's first PA job because she's been she was dying to PA. She was dying to get on set, mm -hmm. dying to get in on the scene. I was like, hey, I got this Travis Kelsey thing. Are you down? She's like, hell yeah, let's do it. I was like, you gotta drive the truck, the van though. Or was it a van or a truck? It was a van. It was a van. I got drive. She was like, oh, I've never done this before. I was like, neither. You know, I use That's it. a we scary we feeling. All, it's, it's a it's you know. a first for all, bro. She couldn't get out the driveway. <laughs> Yeah, we not. both we was yeah. both in in my driveway no. just trying to turn yeah. this key, and it wouldn't like what? We had to like tilt the wheel. Oh yeah, to turn, yeah. You gotta. Yeah, oh, it's one of those. Yeah. Did you have to crank the like the the window to go no, up and down? No, oh, it, no. It, it this was, was a city run. It was a truck. city run truck. Oh, bro. yeah. It, it's the locking mechanism, mm -hmm. so I guess they don't yeah. steal it or whatever. So you gotta like turn the wheel just yeah, ever I so a little bit <laughs> to loot to unlock the the ignition <laughs> key. It, it's weird. Really, it's really weird. But yeah, it was hot though that day too. I remember. Yeah, I had to load all of those tables and chairs by myself. Oh, the guys at call time didn't help you. There, there was no one there. Oh, he like called that's... me. He's like, yeah, so like follow my instructions, and I'm like, Damn. okay. I didn't Facetime him because I was so confused. You Facetime Ken? Yeah. That's hilarious. I never knew Ken to Facetime people. <laughs> well, I no, Ken Facetimes. I think I Facetime Ken one no time. No shit. Yeah. I think it's preferred me like way of of communication. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, if you're watching this, I need to get an iPhone now, definitely, oh so I can start FaceTiming. <laughs> yeah, please tell Drew to get an iPhone. Shout out to Ken please. Smith at Call Time Fleet, y'all. Yep. They, they've been providing so much. Um, so, but yeah, Naomi was on. We it was it was LG, uh, and for her first shoot, the worst happens. Like the worst. The absolute worst yeah. happens. Yeah, Charles. Walk walk, walk me through it. Walk me through it. You, you want to walk me through like, it as a PA? Call you... time. What, like, what, what's going on? So, okay. So, the first few days, I was just, like, running around doing errands and stuff. And all that kind of stuff was totally fine. And then we get... Well, first of all, so I pick up the walkie-talkies, like, late at night. <laughs> this yeah, is where it late. all went wrong. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, I picked up the walkie-talkies. And I was talking to Charles on the phone and, like, going over about, like, what I should do, what I need, you know, all that kind of stuff. And he's like, hey, can you make sure the walkies are charged? And I'm like, Charles yeah. is at my house too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like they should come charge. And then he's like, what? And I'm like, okay. All dead. All of them were dead. Uh, and it, it was like maybe like, what, like eight hours till shoot? Sheesh. Yeah, it was yeah, rough. It was late. So like I plugged them all in and then. <laughs> I remember him. I remember asking him, "Hey, can you reach out to her to make sure she put them on the charger?" <laughs> and that box is like that Pelican case is kind of intimidating. There were yeah, there were two There's... boxes too that I had to carry up from like my parking area to my apartment at like this weird <laughs> hour of the night. People probably thought I don't know. I don't know. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. I've and been there. I, I don't like that. That's where keeping it real goes wrong. Because yeah. the worst, the even, even more happened eight hours oh, from that point. Oh, 100%. Mm. So I don't even remember what our call time was. Was it like call six time, or eight? Call time was six or six thirty, seven thirty, yeah. or something like that. And Kelsey was supposed to be there at 1045. 1045. <clears throat> so everyone's set up. Yeah. Everyone's, you know. Like the morning was fine. Like morning was yeah. gravy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Adam. Um, Adam Ray. Ray. Yeah. Shout out to Adam Ray. Uh, he was absolutely amazing. Um, but he came in, killed all his shots. You know, 12 o'clock hits. Trace is like, where's he at? I'm just like, I don't know, yo. <laughs> Let me yeah. find out. It was like, oh, oh, 30 minutes, 30, 30 minutes. Like, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. And I'm gonna just skip ahead because the like I could increments just got bigger. I could and bigger. yeah, exactly. I could just keep doing that. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna just let you know. Not till 3 15 is when this man starts to roll down the street, apparently. I I got a I got a spidey sense. I'm literally down in the basement, away from everybody. Doing like kind agencies are right outside the door, but I got the door closed. I'm in this room just doing, trying to get shit together and whatnot. And a part of me is like, I need to go outside. Yeah, I need to, I need, I feel like I need to go outside right now. I walk outside and immediately as soon as I step at the end of the drive, no one's out there, bro, but me. As soon as I step <laughs> at the end of the driveway, I see his roll, his Rolls Royce pulling down the street. And I'm like, yep, here's his name. It was 3.15 on the dot. All right, let's, let's get it cracking. So, I run upstairs. I tell the barber, like, hey, man, you ready? He's here. He's like, da, da, da. He's like, yeah, man, I'm cool. I the like, who? The barber? Yeah, we got a barber for him, too, that morning. And he's been there wow. waiting for him as well. Yep. So, uh, and he Travis rolls into the room, like, hey, Travis, the barber's ready for you. He's like, oh, man, I'm good. I don't need a cut. It's like, oh, well, no. You, excuse me, sir? Don't you don't what? All right. You can leave now, homie, I guess. Like, we still going to pay you, but sorry to waste six hours of your day. Wow. Yeah, bro. Just put the whole production behind. It was it was one of those things. So like as a as a PA as, as your first job, walk me through where do you think it all went wrong? But after that point, I think that. And remember, John's listening too. Oh, <laughs> I was so scared of him at first. It's like he hates me. Well, he's just so serious on set. <laughs> but. Um, I think it probably went wrong. Okay, so when they started like talking about all the swords and that kind of stuff, I was getting mm. and the friend that he that Travis had brought, they just kept doing the same thing over and over because they couldn't get the script right. Like they were not memorized at all. <laughs> and we had a teleprompter right next to yeah, camera, bro. That's the only reason the teleprompter was there is to so he could read the lines. And he kept messing it up too. And then come back to camera, bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And he, yeah. And have you seen them since they aired? They all they're all out there now on YouTube. Really? Yeah. They they, they aired it. It's like a it's like a little episodic little thing that LG did. It's like an icon thing. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it, it was, yeah, they started arguing about what sword he needed to have. Was that what it was? <laughs> they or, or they, what? Just, they For had this- just, it was so weird how, like, the entire thing was shot because, like... <sighs> We shot all... Bro, it was, like, six setups in for, for one day. Yeah, it, it was insane. It was... It was a certain person's type of project that we just recently did, but it was a commercial shoot. Mm. So much. There was so, like, that should have easily been a three-day spot because we could have did all of his outside stuff and then maybe the Adam stuff, like, one day, then all the friend stuff another day, and then the the whole photo shoot shit and that yeah. it was just <laughs> you know what went wrong when they canceled pre-light that's where it yeah went wrong. we canceled the pre-light bro and that's really that's where, where it, it that's wrong. where it went wrong. i'm glad you remember that oh i'm oh, very glad I you remember, remember that. that i remember john so walk me through what since they canceled pre-light what was what was uh we had to set up everything yeah, every, and work around everything every, yeah, bro, it was it insane was bad. it was like, at there, um it was at the guy abraham knows the architect his 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 lake house out in least. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, man, um, manic manic Man, uh, manic uh, manic. Manic. Let's let's manic. Off camera, off camera first. You don't know. Okay, you don't know over there. Ah, uh, uh, wait. This is like like um. Who's Joe Rogan's person that he talks off off? Ah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, 
Damn it. I was just listening Regardless, to Regardless, though, Craig is that person. Craig's now. that so person. So from here on out, when we do film, Craig has to be Even here. Even if Craig's not here, we're going to point over there and be yeah, like, like, Craig's here. Craig, Google this for us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to text him. <laughs> uh, but we were we were in his lake house, and it's a very narrow house, too. Like, yeah. it's big, but it's very fucking narrow. Is there glass all everywhere? Those mats. Yeah, yeah, all those mats, very white. Very that's a, Okay, let's, let's come back to that, because I want to talk more about this mat company that is just renting, Taco. like... Yeah, that's a really interesting thing, but well, they they don't. My bad, y'all. I'm hungry. <laughs> they don't. They they give like the companies that the kind of mats that you get. They give to those companies too. So like they're constantly washing those people's mats, like Little Caesars, ah. the Conoco down the street, El Chapo, whatever. You know, what I'm El trying Chapo. To, I don't know why I went that route. You know what I'm trying to oh damn say? God. There was a Mexican restaurant I had in my El, El Maguey. I El seen, Maguey. I've seen El Maguey. He uh, just thought Mexican here. Chapo. That that makes sense. Hey, bro. Look, look. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Anyways, for those of you who don't know, there's a mat company in KC, like a floor mat company, and they rent out like hundreds of mats for productions to cover the floors of like rental houses. I low key don't think that's their hustle. I think their true hustle is that they're they they wash them. I think they they're just a, a washing company. And really? So ha- yeah, because like the washing machines. Because I thought about going into like renting mats and whatnot, and people were like, "No, you can't do that because like they have machines to like." wash those correctly uh, and i was like oh so i wonder if that's what they truly are because they have like rags and all this other shit too when yeah. you go and get them uh, and so i think so you've been you've been there before oh yeah what's it look like it's literally just a warehouse with pallets of of mats and and, and rags and all that shit yeah. and there's and there's another side that's just the washing center and whatnot like it's, it, i don't think it's just for mats i think they're strictly i think they're a high end uh high-end business laundry service I'll put it that way. So they just wash all business, like yeah. all like Mats, restaurants. Rest- yeah. yeah, I think it, I think it's something like that. Uh-huh. And I don't know for sure, but we might get that guy on this ep- on on the podcast. I would love to. I would love to get the tap go guy on. the, yeah. on the podcast. See, see his point of view. <laughs> like, bro, what's that. it been like for film people coming to you? How long has this been happening? That, we got to write that down. We should definitely do that. Craig, are you on that? <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Craig's on it. Yeah. Um, shout out to Craig. Shout out to Craig. Always on it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it it was narrow. Like how you, as a PA, I always tell PAs to like you know watch your surroundings, especially when Dan's around, because Dan's anal about that shit, oh, yeah. especially if it's his oh, location. Yeah. yeah. And how many marks were there when we left? Oh no. A good amount, but he made people like freaking scrub. Bro, magic eraser in that ass. Just- Oh, yeah. If they made the mark, they had to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I made no marks. It was like that. Yeah, like I was. <laughs> well, like, and apparently, I guess he was a little upset because I get like we as we were loading out, um, you know, doors have to look, obviously doors are open and whatnot. And, but a lot of like bugs that are attracted to light. They got in. Got in. And because it's also in white inside. So, Ooh. of course, all that bounce. That's, was that's no out. good. Yeah. So, but um. It was just like you said, the pre light. That really is kind of where it went yeah. wrong. Was that there was no pre light to prepare us for any of that yeah. shit. So I, I'm always curious. I love seeing how people react to stuff. Like, cause you always get like, oh, we overcame this obstacle, and but I'm like, I want to know like how people react to it in the moment. Like when the fire is like at full blast. Like how are people reacting to shit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You handled it pretty well. Yeah, I was just sticking with like the camera department for the most part, and like because camera's pretty chill, right? Ca- they're, camera's they're pretty... all yeah, camera's always chill. Yeah. You you for your first job, I wouldn't have believed that was your first job. Really? Like still, t- like I I you handled yourself really well. It only only thing I would say, and she corrected herself was what when did she I do? when she was doing her receipt. Now you got her sweat. Oh my, okay. <laughs> you should tell him how you did your receipt. <laughs> cute and nice about it like i had this nice paper and i like like uh what what did oh yeah i freaking like like uh i told you tape them together all the receipts all the receipts together on one no one told (laughs) that makes sense and and, and, and it does because because all i said was like all right um tape tape the receipts to each paper and you know number and obviously like number and all that and when I got when she handed me the one paper, I was like, 
And I looked at John and John looked at me. <laughs> and we, we both had this eye. And he was like, I remember when you would do some shit like that. <laughs> and so I was like, hey, let me talk to you real quick. <laughs> yeah, I was, no one told me how to do it. And I was just like, like okay, like, I'm a PA. Like, <laughs> she, 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 she just rolled with the punches. So that's why, like I said, like she you she did awesome for her first job. Yeah. It, it, for someone to be three hours late. For a shoot that should take three days, not one day. Yeah, like she absolutely killed it, uh, and that's why I'm I'm interested to hear you're moving on from it. You you want to move on from PA now? Oh, after yeah. just a few months, you're ready to like oh, yeah. cash in that and be like, I'm back to acting, which I love yeah. that. And I'm and also I know E wants to get into it. We want to talk about your stunt coordinating. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. So sure. like. What, what question? I know you had some questions. Well, I mean, before we even get deep into the stunt stuff, I just kind of want to know more about your backstory because I had no idea you just moved here last year. That is true. Like, I, I would like to know more about you. You are yeah. a mystery. Yeah, she's very mysterious. <laughs> well, so, I mean, even growing up in North Dakota, like, no one did martial arts. No one did any of that kind of stuff. Like, I maybe knew one guy that did karate in high school. And, mm. like, one of the karate studios got shut down because of some, like, bad stuff that was going on. Mm. So, like... What the hell's going on in North Dakota? Like you got to shut down back. You, you, got, you just excuse me. <laughs> like, what could people be doing in karate studios in North Dakota that are bad? They were like, oh, Craig, Google this shit. <laughs> this one instructor who I went to college with, who we were in the same voice class, <clears throat> he was an instructor there. He would take pictures of the kids. Why'd you have to ask, bro? Bro, I, can't, I, can't I didn't think it was gonna be like. I thought, I thought, I, th I thought they were talking about like <laughs> funneling coke, you know, through like the belts <laughs> no. and the and the packages. I didn't think. Shut up! Don't don't look at me that way. That's why I didn't ask questions. I was like, don't look at me that It's way. a messed up world, and I'm I'm happy. I didn't to think it would it. be that bad. Yeah, damn, it was like, bad. It was damn. Bad. Yeah. Well, we don't cut, so let's keep on rolling. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> damn. Yeah. So. How long have you been doing martial arts? One year. Just one. Oh, this is your. Oh, hell yeah! So I started everything when I moved to Kansas City, but I train every day for you do. like from like two to eight hours. Wow, bro, she's are you her. She is heavy on this just constantly like eight hours a day. Her story is just her in the gym. What yeah. what gym do you do you go to? I go to Genesis, but Gen then I, yeah, so I lift like two hours and I do martial arts for like two hours and then I do like stunt work. So it just varies from day to day. Wow. To day. Do you have like a mentor or someone that's like a stunt person in KC that's kind of... Uh, Coleman Taylor, my stunt instructor for the Ronin Stunt Company, which is the company hey. that I'm a part of in Kansas City. Wow. So you you were able to move here last year, start taking martial arts, and found your way into the stunt Ronin Stunt Company. Yeah. All within a year. Well, okay. So what happened <laughs> was, so I started doing stage combat at a... We did this one production of this play called She Kills Monsters back in Bismarck. And I got the lead and I, it just opened my eyes to an entire new world that I didn't even know existed. And that was just stage. It wasn't film. Right. So then when I moved down to Kansas City, I just started making stupid little fights with my friends. Like I would be like, just take videos, like have someone like shoot it. And they were, they were like crappy. Like they weren't good, but they were just, it I was enjoyed, something to be fun. I enjoyed it. Was it. Fun. And it was fun. That's awesome. And like, I just kept posting stuff and added people or whatever in the KC film community and people saw that I was like actively doing stuff. So I got asked to stunt coordinate this one short film. So me and my friends, like they, it was just, they had to take like hits and fall, which are super, super easy stunts. Right. So I went and I did that and it turned out to be great. And then I was asked to come on a set to just like see what was popping with the other stunt people in Kansas. So I went on the set and a few people from their own stunt company came up to me. They like knew who I was. They saw my work, and they're like, "Hi, Naomi." And I'm like, "Let's go!" Let's go! Well, like, That's what like I had all of them on Facebook just because I'm like, you know, just networking and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I have no idea who like 90 percent of these people are. That's the power of putting yourself out there. 100 percent. Like the worst thing someone can say to you is no. Yeah. And then you move on, or you try again until they say yes. Yeah. So it's like. That's I love awesome. it. So what was the reasoning behind it? Like you said you took some theater courses or you were Yeah. Did you major in theater or what was yeah, your Yeah, I was a theater performance major. That's what she said earlier. Um, yeah. So I continue I the reason why I came down to Kansas was cuz I went to KU to continue my education. Okay. But then 
because I went to Greece with a few KU students and performed over there for like two months. We were over there for two months. And then I came back and I'm like, well, I can just go to KU for a little bit and see. Did you, did you finish? No. You know what? It's I okay because this man didn't either. <laughs> I dropped out no, too. Well, I was like, Shout out to us. Shout out yeah, to the dropouts. Hey, I can't. I mean, technically, I sort of kind of did, but it's okay. It's okay. We well, won't get yeah. into that. <laughs> well, like, especially for like acting and, you know, especially stunt work, it's like you just have to go and experience and be on exactly. film sets. I mean, acting lessons are great. You know, obviously, training is great, but you can't do stunt work training in the school. Exactly. You yeah. know, and I did learn a lot of really good things from KU and the professors that like saw what I was doing outside of school. Like I like still talk to them to this day. Like they were super great and helped me a bunch. Okay. So hold on a second. Did you go to KU before you moved here? No. Okay. So, so you- I went to KU for like three, four, half, half like of a year. It's like a semester. And I was like, no. And well, like, I moved to Kansas City while I was trying to go to KU because I'm like, all of my Kansas, ah, okay. like, I'm doing all of this stuff in Kansas City. Might as well just move here. So then I moved here. And then I just, and then that is when they decided to open back up classes to in person. So I'm like, damn. Yeah. So, I'm like, so you moved here before, co- right as COVID happened. Wow. Okay. What was that like? What was it like moving to a new city and like, new city, new state, new people and I all mean, that? Like, I don't know, moving and stuff. I, it's so weird because, like, I'll think about stuff that happened in North Dakota and it sort of just seems like a distant memory. Like, I just try to really, like, live in the moment and just experience and that kind of stuff. So, I, like, it doesn't – I don't really, like, feel any – I don't know. I'm just always moving on in life, you know? I'm, <laughs> like yeah. That. I like that. Um, Free spirit. Yeah. Yes. So, so you – all right. So, actually, I have to know, like, what is in North Dakota? So, wait, isn't Bemidji State? What, what in North city Dakota? in North Dakota too? Bismarck it was the capital. Bismarck. Oh, Bemidji, I think, is in. Is that South Dakota? That's South Dakota. Okay, no, it's not North Dakota. That's I know because I, I, I my, so Reggie, for instance, Reggie doesn't believe that the, the Dakotas like exist at all because he thinks no, he like he's like these are fake fake states. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I've God. never heard of anyone from there. And then like as we were driving back from Panama one day, we ran into people from Bemidji. And he was like, where's the midget? He was like, South Dakota. He was like, the fuck is, like, who lives up there? <laughs> what do you do up there? Like, what is there to do in North Dakota? Especially in the capital. Like, is it? There is. Okay, to be completely honest with you, the only thing people really ever did and still do to this day is, like, underage drinking party. Oh, God. Like, it's they, so it was, like, point. small town vibes. Like, yeah. it's just, like, it's a big ass state, but a small town the worst. Vibe. They're just, mm. they're, it, it's a state in general where like people's dreams like die oh. and they're just so like content with what they have and oh. they don't like pushing themselves you know oh, they're like what, what could have been you know yeah so, that's just like indiana bro 100 percent. yeah ah uh. so it's just it, the people there are nice and it's a very very simple lifestyle like right. but it's not for me is it far is it is it farming is that a lot is it there's a lot, of there's a lot of farming there yeah hmm i was wondering where all the well, I'm glad you got out of there. Money comes. It from. sounds like yeah, it doesn't fit you at all. For real, like I did as much as I possibly could. I did like modeling up there. I did like commercials. You know, I did theater. Like, How often were commercials being shot up there? Not often. Like the it's so funny because I did a commercial maybe two years ago, and I think it aired last year at the Super Bowl. And people from like Bismarck were texting me. They're like, "I just saw you in a commercial." I'm like, "I shot that like last year." Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so like, not much is happening. I think there was a movie that was just shot up there. Actually, it's oh, called like the-, the Badlands or something. Yeah, it's like this western that a couple of my friends were on. I feel like I've heard it. That's it, pretty cool. Isn't that? I feel like that's like. North Dakota is like main attraction is like the like f- landscape. You know what I'm saying? Or like, I mean, if you like hills, I guess. <laughs> that's all it's up. There's no mountains. Come on, there's, there's, there's mountains. That's west. No, you gotta no keep mountains. going west, bro. Uh, all right, I don't know my geography. <laughs> I'll take that. L. Oh my god. So there's just hills. Yeah, I mean, you have like Medora and that kind of stuff. There's I can't even remember it, the Black Hills are in South Dakota, but I don't. It, there's like I don't remember what this place is called, but it's like sort of like a super tiny like uh, Grand Canyon esque type looking thing. Huh. 
Huh. I don't even remember what it's called. Wait, I, how, I don't. How, I can't even picture what North Dakota looks. It's like how, Kansas. Exactly. You it's can't. Like Kansas, but there's. I like thought no it was like trees. Idaho or something. Like it, there's like no trees there. Is it's it just cold? It's cold up there all the time, right? I mean, it, not really. I mean, in the summer is like the summer months. It would get to like it would pop up to like 100, but it'd usually stay within like the 80s. But in the winter, it'd get down to like negative 30. Bitch, no. <laughs> Sheesh. I'm not the one, bro. Oh yeah, oh the snow was black. The worst. Dude, how many black people live in North Dakota? Like, you could probably like, count like how many black people. Four people. I believe that. Yeah. Wow. In the state itself, I guarantee you, North Dakota barely got like. They don't got nothing but white people. Like coming from somebody who's there so like we got proof i'm sorry yeah. north dakota you lost <laughs> well it is so funny because a lot of people from north dakota have never left the state so they think north dakota is like the rest of the world which why it doesn't surprise me that it's just a super heavy conservative republican state <laughs> not to get into politics but like they yeah that's why they're always first to like with, with they're always first to be read when, when we're in we're an election yeah if you ever notice the I think vote. North Dakota has voted blue once. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. I learned some shit today about North Dakota. Yeah. yeah. Never going up there, that's for sure. Yeah. They don't have mountains. They don't have mountains. Have mountains. <laughs> <laughs> There's no mountains. Yeah, in the okay, but you know what? Bismarck has a lot of that's unnecessary Herbalife Pro <laughs> Shakes. Wait, what? It's a scam. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a scam. Scheme. That place is Pyramid Scheme Central. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm really surprised? I'm really surprised that like the the uh, Scientology hasn't taken over more like northern states and whatnot. In all honesty, really? I mean, like they're, North Dakota is super Christian. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, yeah, they're not gonna. Okay, I'm but just, I mean, I see. Like, I guess like people might be easily manipulated. Like, if someone walked in there and was like, "This is it. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the <laughs> way. This is the way." <laughs> Especially come up with like a really nice church and like a community center, and they're like, "Oh my gosh!" (laughs) The building is beautiful. Oh my god! Oh shit! Anyways, okay. So, did you know you wanted to be a stunt woman, or is this something like like a new revelation that happened like this last year? So it, so it's interesting. So I had always like felt like because I'm tall, like I'm five eleven, and like I like lift weights and that kind of stuff. So I've, I've I've always been like generally like like bigger and more muscular looking like than the average girl especially in north dakota Mm. like so i always struggled with like uh like moving and feeling comfortable in my body but i like played sports but i never had like body control Mm. so like my beginning of like my stunt work journey um was actually when I was in Greece, we um, did this acting technique called Suzuki, where it's like a series of bunch of exercises that helps you with like breath control and focus and stay in the moment and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So after doing that, then I went on to doing the production of She Kills Monsters. And I was like, you, the thing that I love so much about fight choreography is just like the intimacy between like the actors and like the combat that you're doing. Because once you have the choreography memorized, it's just, it feels so real. Mm. And that's what I love so much about it. Hmm. And you just feel, it's just, you're so vulnerable with the person that you're like fighting with too once you get to that level. Um, so yeah, so after she those monsters, I was like, I want to do stage combat, but I have very hot takes in the Society of American Fight Directors. We don't need to go into that. So, <laughs> Boy, let me tell you. Oh my God, it's insane. So like, um. After that and coming down and starting to do stuff for film, I was like, no, film. Like, it's just, it's more real. It's more, like, safety-based. Like, I always tell people there's, like, a few differences that I personally see between, like, martial arts, stunt work, and stage combat. And people disagree with me all the time. But, like, the fundamentals of, like, all of these things should be based off of martial arts because, you know, it's all of that is, like, safe stuff. Granted, Mm. you're not actually, you know, having the combat in the film and the stage combat. Um, but like distance with stage, you have everyone in the back has to see it. So the distance is super far apart where if you try doing that in film, it would look like trash. Mm. And then obviously martial arts is, you know, full contact and then speed stage combat. You have to go slow. Otherwise, you know, everyone can't process what's happening. So in stunt work, you Mm. go a little bit faster and there's more contact in stunt work. Like people actually like, you know, make contact, um, 
depending on the style that they're doing. But in stage combat, you don't make contact at all. You always nap it. You always hide it from the audience. That's very true. But with stunt work, you can do things over and over and over again because you're recording. Yeah. Um, and you can switch angles. So mm. it can. it's just manipulated super dif- differently. Um, so I feel like they both feel like super real, but I prefer stunt work because it's just, it's more intense. Mm. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Hmm. Bro, stunt women are coming up now, huh? She she about to pave the way over here. I can see it right now. Yeah. She I knows was, more about stunts than I have ever known in the last I mean, there, there's a lot two minutes. that goes into it. And I've only been doing it for like maybe a year. I joined the Ronin Stunt Company officially October of last year. Wow. So And like I like made us all like stunt reels. I made us a, like a website. Like we run our social media. That was all in. you? Oh, you start running it? Well, it's just like they just that I am just good at networking and like talking with people. And I just I just love that kind of stuff. And I love I was given so many opportunities to grow and I want to be able to help people and give them the same opportunities that people are so like generous to give me. Filming in progress. In progress. In in progress. So like, but but yeah, like I do, I I, I get a lot of people from our stunt company gigs and just I help push them in that aspect of getting themselves out there, how to market themselves, their brand and that kind of stuff because it's super important. But I think in Kansas City that people just, it's it's like, you know, people, you get roles, you know? Right. So it's like, they just never have had to put in that, like work before nor did they really want it like they just love doing it as a hobby which is totally fine but Mm -hmm. now like since we're taking it more seriously we're at a next level like we're most of us have like one sag credit so we're slowly getting working our way up to being union right and now like a bunch of us now are talking to like stunt coordinators from different states especially from atlanta like i've been talking to a bunch of stunt coordinators from out there and i like have just been doing as much as I can to like help bring them up with me. So, so are, are stunt people more inclined to help? Yes. Than like, damn, she already knew I was yes. about to say. Yes. <laughs> For the most part, there are some stunt people out there that are like, we don't like the new people. Like there's just. There's a lot of that. I know. Like, but the, most of the stunt people that I know are more than willing to help. I mean, if you have the drive and if you are doing what you need to be doing, they will be more than happy to help you. Like I'm on all of the stunt listing, what like all of the stunt people websites. I think there's like four main out there. Mm-hmm. Like I'm on all of those. Like I have my stunt reel updated. Like I have my own website. Like if You're people see you it. are putting in the work, they will help you out. Yeah. Like, I if, love that. Yeah. It's just, that is super important. Um, and obviously if you train, like you have to like be training and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think wow. it just comes down to people will help you if you want it. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I saw you flip off a house in a Santa Claus. Oh, that was yeah, suit. that was a lot of fun. Wait, say what? I did like a I, like a fall off of a can roof. We, can we get a clip? Can we? Can we, can we get a clip? <laughs> Craig, can we get a clip? Now play. Nice. <laughs> Where's it at? Oh, it'll be right here. All right, it's probably over now. <laughs> but, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was uh, like one of the first uh, like that was the first high fall gig I had ever done. It was shot in Colombia. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So that was a lot of fun. Um, what would what were like your biggest like parts of training that you had to like learn or like? So I mean, with the stunt company, we train in a bunch of stuff. We train in like we do the high falls, we do a bunch of wire works, we just started doing car hits, we do like uh, like guns and a bunch of different types of weapons and martial arts. Speaking of that, nah, we'll get into that afterwards. Well. Okay, so walk me through like what, so what is like a, I guess like a practice or like a, a routine look like? Like where do you guys meet up at? So we have our own stunt facility in Olathe at the Trilogy Cultural Arts Center. We have like, um, we have a balcony, we have like a high fall tower, we have a ton of mats like of different sizes. We have an air track, like I think I already said we have a full wire work system. But um, we Whoa. just have an insane amount of stuff. Really? Oh yeah, it's it's all legit. And could we could like you, is anybody open just like to come and work out and like try? Um. So yeah, I mean, we let people come and like like a workshop. Have like yeah, I mean, people can come and like see what we do and like train with us depending on certain things. And like, you gotta sign like waivers and stuff yeah. because like I just want to watch. Like I, I don't even know if I want to be the one doing stuff. Yeah. But. Bro, you want to act? 
Yeah, but if I get a role, I'll go and like. You just came back from Mexico from fighting the cartel. Why you mad? That's why I want to chill. I'm not trying to fight anybody. Bro, show show America your eye. (laughs) Show America America your eye. The time will come. For those that don't know, why I have sunglasses on because. uh, He had to fight off the cartel, man. No, they just they they hopped out a taxi on my homie while he's in Oaxaca. We were in Oaxaca shooting a documentary and we got jumped at gunpoint. And we ended up fighting them off. They didn't steal anything, but I did get a black eye. See, you needed Naomi there. I know, I did. Where were you at? We should have hired you. Like, you straight up needed Naomi. Personal bodyguard. Body body she would like hopped off a taxi, like choked, choked <laughs> him, like, <laughs> elbow. Would you, back would you go into bodyguard work ever? Hundred <clears throat> percent. I mean, I do full contact martial arts sports. Wow. Like, bro. I'll, like I kick people's ass and then Bro. i also get my ass kicked i like the fact that she's confident but i'll say you know she could fuck oh, somebody yeah. oh, she's yeah. confident 100%. she's like i've already done it yeah <laughs> oh yeah i mean we spar all the time and it is full contact they will kick you in the freaking face and it, yeah oh, really yeah. well they got all they got the you have headgear and stuff or is it just like I'm just, it depends on the martial art that you're doing oh, not in kung fu we don't have a headgear wow but we were training um in karate and i punched this guy in the face and his contact fell out it was so funny oh <laughs> damn <laughs> <laughs> he uh, said it was to that guy we, we're sorry no we're okay sorry. no to be fair he was like throwing some mean hooks at my head so i was like yeah take that freaking it was good it was wow. good yeah. um, that's nuts <laughs> you guys have full ass like contact like oh yeah so like i like that kind of stuff most of the people on the stunt team don't do that. Uh-huh. I just, I think it's really important to have like that kind of stuff. And especially with sparring in stunt work because you know the flow of a real fight. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that makes sense. Do you cross train with other people or is it always just stunt people? Like, oh, you- I cross train with a bunch of different people. That's sick. So yeah. have, have That's you, um, cool. So do you, so you do fight outside of stunt too? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, she's just a fighter. She's, she's a scrapper. Straight up just, and you've only started doing this within the last year. Did you fight in North Dakota? No. <laughs> No, no one fought in North Dakota. It was Bro, just the gym, the gym got stuff. closed down. What are you talking about? Yeah, the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't. The gym got closed down, gym bro. Well, like at school, like no, it? no one ever did. Oh, there was wait, never like no there was never fights? like a school never fight. A fight. What never. the fuck? Hold on yeah. a second. Like coming down here, people are like, yeah, so you've totally been in a fight. I'm like, but all no. the underage drinking. I'm confused. All the no, no one got in a fight. People just harass each other on social media. Wow, North Dakota is a bunch of. Tweeting ass haters for real, for real. Wow. That's whack. <laughs> Craig, I keep... That's whack. Craig, tweet out to North Dakota. Tell them they suck. <laughs> they do. Um, <laughs> uh, no, okay. So, um, going into more stunt, I'm, I'm like, sorry, I am fascinated by it now. Once you start getting the ball going, um, the do you ever watch movies and can tell, like, yes, 100%. you can break them down now, yes. That's Literally, awesome. yeah. I will. I watch fight a lot of the time. I'll sit down and watch fight scenes frame by frame because I like to see like how they edit it, how they shot it. Um, like there's a bunch of movie tricks that if you sit down and watch a fight frame by frame, that you'll see. Um, What's your favorite action movie? My okay, <laughs> I have a lot, but my <laughs> favorite action movie I think is It Man Two. It is okay. So, I, I rock. I rock with that. I love so, It Man Two. Good. That's the uh that's the, that's the Mike Tyson one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I haven't seen it. You, it's what? so good. It is so good. I don't Let's, watch a lot of movies. No, so neither. Late. Okay, honestly, late. until people started being like, You're in the film, you have to watch all these movies. That's what everyone I didn't tells either. Me. I didn't either. Yeah. Like for real. This man I ain't even you. seen The Godfather, bro. I had I a, haven't even seen The Godfather. Oh well, no, you're you're young. It's understandable. You're both young. I get it. True. Let's move on past it. I'm done with that conversation now. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I don't, I don't like, I, I like but, movies, but I'm not one to just sit and watch like a three hour long movie, yeah, like just for like, fun. I don't understand. Like, make me make that make, how do you, I'm not saying you get, that's how you get better at your craft, but how do you learn what's going on without not doing that? Like, I, okay, so I'll put it this way. For one, YouTube is like wh- where I live. So like, instead of watching the film, a lot of times I'll watch the BTS of the film where they're breaking it down. <laughs> So like I'm like and it's like an expedited version of like what they did in the film. I hate well, you okay, take the yeah. fun out of this shit. It's well, so I easily. do the same thing with like fight scenes. Oh, I can I've watched so many fight scenes from films that I haven't even seen the entire film. Yeah, exactly. Like I'll, I'll watch like certain scenes or certain things or like to see how they lit it or like what shots they chose or whatever. Well, you know what? That that makes sense. I guess coming from 
a, a stunt standpoint and then a camera standpoint. And like me as a producer, like I, I, I love to watch movies because I love to see, you know, how they market it, how they yeah. opened it, how they end it, especially, and you know, how, how they made this this whole this whole thing work and sell. So of course so I, I I can see why you guys would just focus on what you want to focus on. But there is a, like there is like to be a better storyteller, especially as a director or producer, like you definitely and a writer want to watch a film all the way through, Absolutely. you know, yeah. so th- there is good reason to do that. I just like, if I start watching a film that I recommend it to me, it's not good in the first like 10 or 15 minutes. I'm like, I'm off. It's oh, like, yeah. I don't have the time <laughs> yeah. to like yeah, wait for this before. slow burn to catch up and be worth it. Like, Great. Man, man, this food's getting cold, but I'm going to still You should it. eat it. Yeah, you should Bro, eat it. Bro, I don't want to be chomping in the mic. It's well, just put it, put it away. Well, that's like, why you see what I did earlier and I was like, Bleh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just do um, that. Eat your food. Bro. I'll, it's there. It's there. It's there, America. It's there. Anyway, back to this. So, um, what um, what's probably the hardest thing to conquer as a like as a stunt? Like, what's one of those things that people are always kind of just like, oh fuck, we're gonna do that? I think that there there's a couple different things. I think having body control is the number one hardest thing and most important thing that you need for stunts. Like you need to be able to trust yourself during the stunt because like if the safety person isn't watching, like it's up to you. Mm. Right. Mm. So I think that especially with martial arts and like the martial arts fights, if you like accidentally kick them in the face or if like you mess up the choreography and injure them, that's not good. That's how you get blacklisted. Like Mm. that is like one of the most important things. I think another thing too is like, you just need to commit. I th- the, what I always think of and what I always tell people is once you start getting in your head about the stunt and you don't just do it, mm-hmm. that's when people get messed up and that's when people get hurt. Mm-hmm. So it's like, just like dancing or anything yeah. else. Hmm. Yeah, you, you just have to practice yourself. it enough because to be fair, this is what I think that stunts is safe as long as you have the training and you know what you're doing. Mm. It's like once you start to become more of a daredevil and just do things Mm -hmm. to do them without the training, then that's where people get hurt. So how Mm. do you take a hit by a car? Safely. (laughs) Good answer. (laughs) I mean, there's 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 things that you got to do because we just started doing them and we're actually using my car for it, which is pretty funny. I'm getting a new car, so it's fine. Um, But there's there's a lot of different techniques. I mean, you never the car never hits you. You hit the car. It, one thing that I think it was in the first John Wick movie that I watched when Keanu Reeves got like hit by the car, mm. he is the one that placed himself on the car. What if the car hits you, it's over. Like there are certain ways to roll, there are certain ways to get on the car depending on the hit and that kind of stuff, wow. and certain ways to get off of the car. It's all just going through it a million times until your body just does it. Hmm. How do you how do you like what what it's what do you do to prevent injury or like to take care of yourself? Because I, I'm assuming as a stunt person, you're almost like treating your mentality for like your body as like an athlete. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Well, that's why I like lift like six days a week, and like I do a lot of stuff on my own time. Um, so I mean, just people's diets are super important. Like like any athlete, like you have to fuel your body with the right stuff. I mean, like I granted, I still like eat what I want, but diet is huge. Um, Mm -hmm. and just training and training and training your body to take hits. Mm -hmm. I did professional wrestling for a little bit and that, yeah. The fuck? When when, when did you have the time to do that? In North Dakota? No, in Kansas. Bro, you've only been here for like a year or two. How have you? Okay, hold on a second. The WWE contacted me. Shut the fuck up. No, and I turned them down. Why? Because I don't want to do professional wrestling. I want to be a stunt woman, an actress. But you have done it for like, like maybe like six months. No, no, no. Vince, Vince, once Vince has you, Vince has you. Uh, Unless he doesn't like you anymore. That would be so cool, though. That would have been fucking dope. It's, it's, it's a lot. You, it those, is. The people that professional wrestler, they are bricks. Nothing mm-hmm. hurts them. Professional wrestling is way, it's like the most impact Bro, it's intense it's, it's intense because it's all, it's not choreographed it's all like impromptu like choreography wow like they they do rehearse it 
but not it's like, all the not, time. Not, yeah, sometimes not even at all. They just go in like and call it in the ring. Yeah, bro. like 100. they know like the combos. Like if this happens and we do this, no, they don't even do that. No, they it's, don't. Do it's it. literally like calling it as it's about as to happen. They go. Yeah, wow. That's why it's all live, and that's why when people are like wrestling's fake, like no, and bro, no, it's, it's not. not fake. <laughs> like they're they're actually wrestling. Right. Like they, they it's it's just controlled in a way because there's a script it's behind like stylized it, and it's too. stylized. Yeah, that's crazy. It's insane. It's literally gladiator, but. Scripted. So how did that happen? When when did it hit you up? Like how did the whole Yeah, what so, the fuck? Like So I have a friend, his name is uh Craig Keesman and he's like amazing. He's like a dad to me. Um so he hit me up and I just started training with them down in Osborne, Missouri. They Craig has a winery and they train out there and stuff. So I started training with them for maybe like a month and it was like super similar to stunt work and stage work that I've done. It's just like tweaks and that kind of stuff. Uh uh-huh. So, so then I had emailed the WWE maybe like a month after I got here because I was just like, "Mm, I'll see if they respond to me. Like, seriously, my full body shot was me doing a handstand. I was like, there's no way that they're going to like respond to me. They like called me and they're like, hey, we want to like, like fly you down to like uh, audition for us. And like the thing I, I might have done it. But if I would have like passed like the final round, um, which it's Craig, hell. well, they were Craig was saying that he thought that there was if they if there's any pot- potential in anyone they will use them. Right. So like he had a pretty high hopes that I was gonna get in, but mm-hmm. they wanted me to move down to Orlando and be there for full time for like ten years. Yeah. And I'm like, ten years. Yeah, like, bro, it's a commitment. I'm like. Because she would, yeah. it wouldn't just be straight WWE. She she would have to go through their smaller circuits yeah. to build her name up. She yeah. has to go through the classes, yeah. the auditions, it's training every day. Training, literally. Yeah. Like, you should watch the documentaries on on WWE and all that. Like it's That's cr- it's nuts. crazy what these guys go yeah. through. Um, I they're just as m- mentally and physically broken as fucking any NFL players. For yeah. real, for real. Like it's really um, that's wild. Um, who was it that I just watched? Uh, I watched uh, Randy Savage's documentary okay. not too long ago. That shit tore me up. Man yeah. passed out. Man literally died from a heart attack. In the ring? No, I I think he was. Was he driving? I think he might have been. He it was. It wasn't in the ring. It was. It was way after he had retired. But like ah. all that, you know, juice and all that. Sheesh. All that shit from back in the day, it, it builds up and adds up to your 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 lungs and your history and your, your body. I mean, your body never forgets. That's one yeah, thing. your body I, never forgets. I read a book that was talking about how your body never forgets, especially yeah. with all the impact that your body takes. Like, what was your experience with that? I mean, honestly, I always I always like to say this is like it. It's just like weakness leaving your body, like pain. Ah. Pain is so, weakness leaving the body. For real. Like I just, I'm so much stronger because of everything that I've been doing. I still take care of my body. Like uh-huh. I, like I stretch a bunch, you know, like I get like, I have a massage therapist. Like I see the chiropractor, you know, and, yeah. like, I eat right. You know, I do what I'm supposed to be doing uh-huh. um, to make this like a sustainable career, mm-hmm. you know, and granted people get injuries and that kind of stuff, but like. I, it's very important that you listen to your body. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I, I just, I train a lot and I just can keep conditioning my body and like pushing myself to get to the level that I want to be at. Wow. So, I love it. What do you, what were you going to say? I, I wanted to like, cause if anyone is watching this that like wants to get into, you know, stunt performances and stuff like that. Like I want to know, like give them like some behind the scenes scoops of like, what it looks like to like do as a profession. Like does your day rate depend on like the The amount of stunts? And it depends on obviously like the, if it's SAG, if it's non-union, obviously if it's non-union, you're not going to be doing it like a dangerous stunt. Um, but, um, and the, the, which SAG contract it is in that kind of stuff. And the more dangerous the stunt is, the more you get paid, um, in that kind of stuff. Like, as a SAG stunt person, your like minimum day rate is like a thousand bucks. So nice. like, and if you're like um, on like a huge movie for like weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months, it, you get paid a crap yeah. ton. Wow, I bet stunt people are probably making oh they make hundred hundred thousand a year, bro. They make bank. Yeah, but it's just like getting to that level is like what's hard, and that's where people a lot of people fall out. That's why the same most of the, like all these actors have the same stunt doubles. 
Yeah. Well, the nice thing about it, too, for me, is there's only maybe, like, 10 stunt women, 5, 10, and taller in the U.S. Really? And I'm the only one that has muscle. There's only 5 or 10 in the what? 10, like, 10 stunt women, 5, 10 are over in the U.S., Uh, and they all weigh, like, 140, like, 135. They're, like, tiny. Yeah. So, like, and I'm, like... I like I lift like almost every day. Yeah. So like, bro, let's go. Yeah, let's go. I'm um, damn. I learned Stunts. so much. Okay, liability. Like, let's say like <laughs> someone hires you to do some stunts. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you looking at to make sure like their insurance or whatever like their production insurance has? Do you even think about that? Is that something like your? I mean, it in Kansas it doesn't. A lot of the things that you do don't require insurance, and we're not doing insanely dangerous stuff to where we'd need it oh we're doing a couple of hits for fight choreography like it's, yeah like you can be like this far away from someone and make the punch sell like right. d- depending on the camera placement yeah so like but like for doing the fall off of that roof they did have insurance um yeah. and we talked to them about that kind of stuff so it's like once a stunt gets dangerous that's when i like i'm like all right y'all have insurance you know, because yeah. I mean, in the indie film scene in Kansas City, a lot of those guys don't have insurance and yeah. like they all a lot of people want to do all oh, these cool, crazy stunts, but they don't want they want to pay for them. They don't want to pay for them. Yep. And some people stunt people aren't what's expensive. Getting stunt people and all their equipment is what is expensive. Yeah, because like mats and all of this stuff that we have and like the wire works track and, and the, the prep rigging, days and the, yeah, it's yeah. just. And like teaching the actors to fight choreography or like prep day, yeah, for real. Yeah, like I think a lot of people in Kansas City don't understand how much stunt work, like all the training you have to put into it. Because mm-hmm. you, I've seen a bunch of like Kansas City films, and the fight choreography in them is just that it is what ruins the film. Like mm. if they had worked on it more or had anyone that knew what they were doing like it could have been taken to the next level right yeah. and like the ron and sun company we don't charge a lot we want to help bring those films to the next level because uh, it's really bro. important to us that's, yeah. and that and that's and it's crazy that you don't like because I, I honestly wouldn't have known of them if it wasn't for her because i once, just found out about this interview once she started like like once she started popping off and buzzing, and I like noticed that she was on Facebook a lot more, and I was seeing Ronan a lot more. Uh-huh. That's when I reached out to them separately about the Brassy thing. Oh yeah, oh, bro, you're gonna have to quack that out. Yeah, you gotta remind me. I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna definitely remind you. People can't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but that I I and I, I forgot who I talked to, but I even called him and 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 just kind of like. I wonder if you talked to Coleman. It might have been Coleman. It, it was. It was. Like, it was during when I was filming Solitary and all that. Is when I reached out. So like back in May or June. Like it's been a minute. But like it was just one of those things. Of like, hey, can you guys help with this? And he was like all for it. It was and probably whatnot. Coleman. Like he sounded like yes. Like let's let's do it. And I'm hell like yeah. hell yeah. And I I was still like bro. Yeah, they they're the real deal. We can like, do that's a lot amazing. of like really 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 cool stuff, and we love helping people even at like super 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 small rates. Like we'll even do stuff for free depending on like the, the like the, yeah like it, even just like teaching people how to do like basic fight choreography so it doesn't look like shit on film is just it's really important, especially because you know a lot of people are saying oh we want to bring Kansas City up to the next level. You people say that, but they don't actually like do anything to try to make that happen. Yeah, and that's like. And this is how you do it. You, if you want to be in a, Cynthia just told me this the other day because I went and hung out with her because I was telling her about beep beep that whole uh, project. And I was like, hey, I want to use blood. And she was like, why? I was like, well, I just want to give out the effects. She's like, if you if you can't pull it off, a hundred percent, don't do it at all. Yeah, and. You're right. A lot of people do these fight choreographers in these indie movies, which I'm not trying to knock anybody's right. film at all, but they weren't able to do it 100 percent because they didn't want to take the time into like calling somebody 100 percent and saying, 100%. "Hey, could you guys help us with this?" Because they're like, "Man, a stunt person is going to cost a thousand dollars a day, yeah. or at least a thousand dollars just for them to help us out." So right. there's no point. We can just do it ourselves. But it's like, no, it, the the quality just goes down. Like you can tell when a person that knows what they're doing is on set versus when it's not. 
Like yeah. even just like someone like overextending their arm on a punch, it's like you can tell. Mm. Like it's just so yeah. So speaking of like going into your world more, an unfortunate accident just happened with a DP being shot on st- yeah. on set. What's your belief on guns on set now? So, I mean, with the stunt company, we do, like, all airsoft guns. If we have to do blanks, like, we um, we, we do a bunch of safety checks. We show, like, people that the gun's empty. Like, we show, like, the magazine's empty. Like, these are airsoft guns. Like, I think a lot of people are heading towards using airsoft guns and, like, just having, like, gas in it. So that way you have the blowback and then you add, like, the sound and the effect in post. Mm. Um. And that it just also goes super quick that way because like you just fill it up with gas, like you're good. That way you don't have any of like uh, the dangers of actually hurting someone on set. Mm-hmm. Um, because actually using a real gun is just it's it's like why, why like there's no good reason to actually do that. Mm-hmm. Like there's not. I just learned that shooting blanks can be deadly. Yeah, like, I mean, mm-hmm. th- like even just like the air shooting out of it. If anything comes out of it, it, it like it could, it could it, kill it's people. kill, it's really? kill people. Like it's that, and that's what it, wasn't it shrapnel that 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 caught her or was it an act? It was an actual, it was an actual bullet. Oh, it, that's right yeah. because the, it went through the DP and the director. It came yeah. out that um, but they actually had live ammo on on set now. That's that's yeah. right. Well, there's that's, even been instances in Kansas City where it's like someone has brought a real gun and someone like has ammo on set, and I'm like, why, 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 why would you ever in a million years do that, bro? That's why I always get like when when we shot USV, that shit was so like surreal because like you wouldn't believe how many videos I've been on with my homie Brandon where like everyone wants to tote that weapon and it's just like yeah. Why? No, for yeah, absolutely. People like love taking pictures with props and making them look like idiots. Literally, if you have a prop gun and you're going like this, no one will hire you after that is posted. Like, yeah, like there is this instance that so I was working on a set and someone had posted like a picture of them pointing the gun at their head and I didn't see it. And a stunt coordinator friend messaged me and they're like, why? Why is this happening? And I'm like, no, like we weren't on set when that was happening. Like I asked that person to take it down. Like you were on top of it. Yeah. It's people don't understand like what they post. The entire world can see Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And the film community is so small. Like, you know, absolutely. A hundred percent. People will definitely look at that and, 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 and remember, that'll be a factor in hiring you later on. A hundred percent. You no, know, I can't trust that guy if he's just pointing guns at himself and taking pictures on set. Right. Like, yeah. Damn. That is. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that, that was an unfortunate accident. I, I still, I, I, after getting all the new information, like I'm all like for just airsoft guns. I don't see. A hundred percent. If we, if we can, hell, even, even 3D. Like now, if we can make it look real, what's the point in using real anymore? I agree. I think it comes from like, there's like a gap between older sun people and the new generation of sun people. I think a lot of the older people that do stunts like having the real stuff on set. I mean, the older sun people that I know, they would take falls without mats. Like their bodies are built like bricks. And whenever people are like, can I have a mat? They're like, oh no, you're just like being like a little baby. So I think- that is a factor mm. in it if people like just the different generations of right. some people. Right. And like how safety is becoming just way like a bigger concern than it was in the past. Yeah. And it makes sense. And like even like that's just how generations work. Right. You know? yeah. Like as you learn, as more casualties happen, like we become a lot more careful. And right. people that grew up and made a living doing it a certain way are like, they're so soft. They're so like this is unnecessary. Yeah. They're being extra, but it's true. It's like and like I like how you said that you do like your routines and and all of your your workouts and your recovery yeah, is to make it healthy. sustainable. A hundred percent. Like consistency is the key. Yeah. Like it just is. Yeah, because you could easily like go ham, you know, on on a, on a certain shoe or right, you know go ham in the gym a few a few months and then like have an injury and then you're out for like months or even. Oh, uh, yep. So. Yep. It is so key, I think, to have it be sustainable. Yeah. I love that you said that. And 
it's, it's just always going to bug me knowing that, like, why would you have live ammo on set, bro? Because they didn't check it. Like, they are just... Like shoot, have you read? Have you read up on that? I heard that production was like already had, like people walked off even before. Yeah, the morning yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, like, there was already safety concerns from the start, from like cutting costs and like a bunch of other BS. Like, yeah, they. What well, I think I was reading that they. So it was a union project, but a l- bunch of people had quit, and they brought a bunch of non-union people on. Yeah. And then all of like the union people were supposed to leave and that kind of stuff, and yeah. I was like, it was. It, I I feel, I feel extremely bad for the armor. She, she, I mean, granted, I feel bad for it, but at the same time, that's her responsibility. Yeah. A hundred percent. And she even admitted to like, I, Craig might have to fact, actually fact, fact check this one, but I think it came out that she even admitted to like knowing that the ammo was on set and knowing that people were going to shoot off the guns, like in between mm-hmm. times and whatnot. Craig, check me if I'm wrong. Um, But like you, like why? Like. What's the point? Well, it, to- I, I feel like it sort of goes back to like, oh, this thing would never happen to me. And then it happens to you. And it's like, And then you, shit. you just literally fucked up the entire world, the entire yep. film world. Yep. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that one person is because is, it's happened over time. Yep. Yeah. Like, you know, Brandon Lee. Yeah. His yeah. dad, <laughs> yeah. even like it, it goes like it's it it sucks the fact yeah. that like we can't get around safety. Like, well, I think- well, I I mean I think the first thing that has to come like a lot of these sets as like people are trying to like get back on schedule or make sure yeah, we're not burning uh, yeah, time. Like rushing, like they're rushing stuff. it. Like the AD grabbed it off the cart of the armor, like. He like they handed the gun to the to the actor like you he shouldn't be you shouldn't be rushing safety at all like <clears throat> and I think that's yeah. what I think we learned that too like now like and any you know set that we're on is never going to be about saving time and yeah. you know what's even more fucked up is that there's people out there right now who are sitting on their high horse like well if they didn't want less hours on set then shit like that wouldn't happen you know for a fucking fact that there are people out there like that right now. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if, if if they didn't want if they weren't petitioning, you know, for 10-hour days and we had a full 14, 15-hour day, we had enough time to go through that. Like it, it's never going to end. Yeah. Nah. It, it sucks that there's no like HR in film. <laughs> like there's oh, there's so much bad that's going on. Bro, Craig would be a great HR for the film for the film world, I think. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's such a problem solver over there. Thanks, like, Craig. I truly, I, I I would truly hire Craig for film HR. For the, yeah, for film <laughs> film like being so spontaneous and like hiring your friends or people that you know is such a, it's like a really cool part of our industry and also like one of the biggest flaws. One of the yeah. Biggest flaws. But you know, it, it kind of like it it makes us hold us accountable though. You know, and yeah. when we don't, then that's where the issue is. You know, whenever right. we let shit slide. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, like we have to be able to call people out and be like, "Hey, this is not cool." Yeah, you know? but it's like even then, it's like because I am all for that. Like I like it's so important to me that people feel safe on set. Like, yeah. Or if people are being harassed, I like go and like stop that shit. Like it's it's so important to me. But then it's like sometimes I think people get worried about like, oh, if I do that, then people are gonna blacklist me. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I'd rather not work with those. People. I'd rather not work with a hundred percent. Like. If, I think people are just so scared to speak up because they're scared for their career. I do too. And and one thing I learned while I was in Mexico, we were talking, shout out to Nathan and Jay, but they had, they read a ton of books and I always just love listening to them because they're always so like intellectual. Yeah. But one of the things they were talking about was like like the three rules or the three characteristics that will like get you ahead in life in any business or industry or whatever. One of them is like having like exceptional work, like the best of the best work. The second is being on time and being consistent. And the third is being a pleasure to work with. Yep. Yeah. And if you have two of those, most likely you're going to be able to get rehired or like get further along in your business or right. career. But what we were talking about, we're like, we know a bunch of people that are the best at what they do and they're exceptional. But the other two, they're like terrible to work with. Yep. And, you know, maybe like they're not always consistent or on time because they're more about I'm the best at what I do. Like you should be on my time. Yep. But the thing is like your impression and how you treat people is the one thing that you can't ever get back. 100%. Like you can get better at your work. Every, you can get better at your work every year, every project. And you can work on being consistent and being on time. But if you burn 
how you treat people and that's the, like their interaction with yeah. you, that's going to leave a bad taste in their mouth forever, yes. no matter what you do. Yes. So <clears throat> I'm always like, and it's funny because you hear all the time in KC from like people that come in from LA or New York, how they're so stuck up and they're assholes and like they think they're so like above everyone. And it's like, they make it easy just to be a good person. Like if you're just a decent person, like you're already so farther ahead of like everybody else. When yeah. I'm like, in reality, it's just being a good person and it oh, shouldn't be, for sure. for it shouldn't sure. be like a big crazy thing, you know? Yeah. So. To- I totally a hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. I think, I think we got it good in the Midwest cause we kind of know that like we, if we're, yeah. if we're assholes, like no one's going to hire us. Oh, for sure. You know for what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. No, that's a hundred percent. <laughs> that's a hundred percent fact, right there. But in other cities, it's different. Other cities, like it's more about what you can produce. Right. So, what? What's next? Like, what? Not what's next, obviously, because we know what's next for you. You're doing great things right now. Um, but where where is it that you want to go in ten years? Like, where is it that you you truly see yourself? I think with the drive and everything that I'm doing and just not giving up and just going after everything. I think that I will be like a successful stunt person actress in like 10 years because I'm going to be moving down to Atlanta. Would you prefer to have your own stunt company though? I would love to. Would you expand Ronin (laughs) if they offered it to you? I... I would love to be a part of Ronin. I will be a part of Ronin forever. They are my oh, yeah. crew. They are my group. I love them so much. And I think most of them want to stay in Kansas City. They don't want to push past what Kansas City has to offer. And that's totally That's fine. totally fine. Yeah, like that's fine. That's not for me. Like I think I will eventually I don't know if I'll move to a different stunt company or if I'll just like have a bunch of stunt friends and just train with them and that kind of stuff because like there's not a a ton of stunt uh, companies out there. I mean, you have like 8711, like all like, you know, the super popular ones. Mm -hmm. So like maybe, but like, I just am really focusing on what I have to offer and all of my training and just building and networking and that kind of stuff. I mean, you're, you're, Mm -hmm. like you said, you're doing it right now. You're really killing it right now. For real. My girl PA acted and I guess got an offer to WWE all within like the last like (laughs) three months apparently. The last 48 (laughs) hours essentially. Like like, she's been going nuts. She's been going ham. And she went to the gym eight out out of eight hours out of that day too. How much protein do you eat a day? Um, so I'm pescatarian but I try to eat like like 170 grams. Hell yeah. Like, I might right now, because of how much I do, I'm at like 22 to 2,800 calories. Yeah. Hey, uh-huh. That's remember. good. That was good. Wow. I remember that's my, dedication. My that's not That's not easy. I try to eat like 120 grams of protein and I'm like stuffed every yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm well, like throwing yeah. up. I'm like, oh, this is a lot. I'm it, it is. And I think your body definitely has to like get used to it and stuff. Like I carry around this gallon jug and people probably think, oh, she's probably an asshole. No, I don't care. I do that all you the time. Do that. I was doing that in college. I used to get made fun of all the time. But I'm, I, I, I love I'm it. I'm a guy who, Good. is it Craig? I want, see, Good, look, Craig. everybody got a bottle bottle except me. I didn't bring mine into me because oh, I was like, mind. man, they're see, and that's, fun of me. And that's why I have not eaten my food barely because I ain't got nothing to drink Yeah, you got nothing to drink. But <laughs> no, I don't want to drink that beer right. now. <laughs> um, no, that. Um, what else? I, I know we had. We so had if, so if there's anyone more. that like is even playing with the idea that they want to do stunts, do they need like to what? Do, what? Do, okay, obviously, like yeah, like we'll put her her social so they can reach out to you. Yeah, hundred percent. It'll be like right here. Somewhere. Yeah, it'll be it'll be in the description or somewhere. Yeah. But <laughs> like what? I don't know. Like what are like some steps that you wish you would have known when you first started thinking about this? So. I have been very, very, very blessed with how my journey has been going so far. So if you, if anyone is interested in stunts, um, the Ronin in in Kansas city, I guess we actually do classes at, with the Ronin stunt company. Um, it's all on our website. We have like a wireless class. We have like a stunt acting class. We, we, there's a bunch of classes that we do do. And we just expanded to adult classes. Like, there's a, a, quite a bit of adults that like doing it with us now. Kansas City, hear me now. You need to do this because if not, then we're going to keep getting stuck in the same ass cycle where all of our no, shit's going to be mediocre. For 
for real. Like invest in if you want to invest in this city, you need to invest in the Rona Stunt Company because obviously they're the ones who we need to be fucking with right now. And there's no excuse now because I didn't yeah, know about them. There's no excuse now. If you, if you watch this, you know exactly who they are. You know who so, they are. Yeah. And you know that they're here to help us. And if you're not using them, then you're you're just- That's your loss. That's your loss. I'm definitely calling them for any, <laughs> like I, any I have no questions about stunts anymore because we have someone who can do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice to know that like, and, and that's also a thing that like between me and Ease that I've noticed that we've built up this rapport and this relationship where like every single t- per- type of- person in a department when you think about it bro this is why i was so excited because i didn't know any stuff people like i I, we i knew um who was i don't think you were on set i mean you were there for half the day i think um oh what was his name he had a cool name like like thor like something like that um oh was it thor stone no uh dang it what was his name i'm gonna have to look it up he had a really cool name but he had one stunt and production totally messed up schedule like he was there for 12 hours and was like the last shot of the day I felt so it's bad for him, but he killed it. Like yeah. Wait, he was, he, is he, an, he's an actor, right? Yeah. He's an actor. Um, his name is, I think his name is Thor because I it, think I just saw his name come across. I don't know the if it's Thor. Call. It's a really, really cool name, but I don't remember. Is he in KC? Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I think, you know, I just saw, I just swear I saw an actor named Thor in some casting calls that I've seen. Yeah. Recently. He was the only person I'd met that did stunts. So when, when I found out you did stunts, I was like, this is sick. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. I don't think it's like th- it starts with a T. Like T. You know what? Now that I think about it, he don't know shit. Sometimes. <laughs> he, he, watch his name be Thor, and then you're gonna feel dumb. If they do stunts in KC, I probably know them, but I don't know no. You don't know Thor. Like, like, you talking Thor. about Chris Hemsworth, nigga? Like, hold on. No, a second. he had a dope name. It was like I don't even. Wanna, I, need to, I don't even want to try it. I need. I'm, I'm gonna call someone real quick while you guys do this. I'm gonna figure. You really out. gonna call I somebody to figure so it out? Curious. I feel like Craig could just look at the call sheet. Craig, it was on on Abraham's. Who was the guy that did the stunt? It wasn't even a stunt. He just ran into the actress and he had that line at the end of the day. Oh, that, that was high school. Kane ah! Erickson? Oh, never mind. Thor? I thought... I do not know. So is he like a stunt person or does he... Because like- he did stunts, uh, he did stunts on, Bren- on Brennan's, right? Or was that a different person? Yeah. Yeah, he was doing like uh, fight choreography and stuff. Got you. But I have to look him up. He was the only stunt person. You gonna look him up and be like, "Hey, bitch! I heard you out here doing my job. The fuck's it's, up?" It's not so much as that. Is it's very important for me to check people's credentials to see if they are actually a stunt person or not, and to see if they're doing it right. I, I yeah, because there's yeah. a lot of people in KC that are like, "Oh, I do stunts," and then you look at their credentials yeah, and like they what they produce, stunts. and I'm like, "Do you?" And then do we don't really stunts? know. Like, I didn't. I, I can't tell you what makes a great stunt person or what makes someone like. Okay, like you know, like right. I'd have to really like well, get to okay. see people there is and this, study. I was on this one set. I'm not gonna say it or who it was, but we were like doing we'll crack it out. Oh, really? No, it won't. Because I'm not <laughs> gonna. That's too much editing. I'm gonna forget. <laughs> right. So, but I, we were on this set, and it was like the stunt company or company or whatever, and we were just like doing like just like falls off a balcony, and we're just jumping over the railing and going onto like the big mat that we had. And this this one homeboy just decides to come up, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm a stunt person." And we're like, "Okay, well, he lands so wrong, like." And we're just like, "Are you a stunt person?" He's like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "Not by the way, he just landed, homie." Like he was just homeboy. How do you land wrong? When you land on a mat, you're supposed to be landing on like, like, like. Like right here ish, not too high on your shoulders, not like on your butt, like right there. Homeboy just landed on his freaking tailbone. He just went, and we're like, ah. uh, that must make some people cringe. Oh as yeah, fuck. or like when you like don't exhale like before you hit, and then it's like when you hit the mat, like boom. I'm like, <laughs> see, bro, I would never have known. Now I know this shit. Now I know if I ever hire a stunt person and you go. <clears throat> I'm like, all right, like, ah, that's a rug. You didn't breathe, motherfucker. <laughs> <That's a> <laughs> Cut, reset. Cut. You're doing it again. You got to call oh Naomi. Hello? Yeah, we need you. Did they breathe wrong? <laughs> like, oh my this God. This guy doesn't know how to breathe. Like, there's just such a huge difference between daredevils and stunt people. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like it's the training aspect of it. Man, I. Bro, we got to take classes. 100%. I'm not taking classes. We'll take classes. I, yeah, I for want. Real. I would oh. definitely love to start like incorporating that. Like, we, yeah. we need to get KC on this shit and make sure Steph and all of them know that. Like, yeah, yeah, you guys are you guys are the real deal. Yeah, 
I'll, watch, I'll, and I didn't like I said I didn't know you made the reels and all that shit either because the shit looks so legit. You're just like, damn. Yeah, you've, like been, they, you've been killing like that's it. why people are afraid to call probably because you make the shit look so legit that people are like, nah, they cost too much fucking I think, money. I think professionalism is just incredibly important it is. in what we do. I you agree. know, and like it's. I mean, people like know me. Like, I feel like I'm pretty easy to talk to. I'm not gonna be like like a bitch or anything. Yeah. Like, like I just want to help people and help people get better, make their products better. You know. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, th- this is what it's all about. This and now we about. have someone to call. And now, now we have someone to call. Yeah. And now you guys have someone to call too. So remember, Ronan Stunt Company. <laughs> Beautiful Naomi. She acts stunts. She'll beat you up. And and <laughs> she's actually the one that gave me this black eye. Yeah, yeah let's be real. Like he, <laughs> I tried to drink out of her gallon water bottle and she wasn't having it. <laughs> Bow! Came out of, came off the yeah. top rope. <laughs> um but no, but thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and like I hope so you much. had a good time. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm glad we did this episode. This me was too. a really good episode I'm, to start I'm super to come hyped. back with. Yeah, thank um, you guys so much. Now right. now this might not air for like four weeks. Are you okay with that? Now, right now. All right, well. Oh, your post production schedule just got a little bit hectic. More, <sighs> throw it over to Craig. Fuck it, <laughs> Craig, yeah, Craig. Craig. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right, y'all. But this is filming. This is filming in progress. I'm your host, Drell Washington, with my co-host Isai. And once again, thank you so much, Naomi, for joining us. Yeah, we really do appreciate guys. it. We'll have you back on too for sure. This can this will be a reoccurring thing. Like we're, we're we're going to want to know more. Yeah, I want in I, the next six in the next two three months because yeah. like if you. If you can get called by WWE, start acting in like four or five commercials and films, and have the time to work out, I need to I need to know more. Like we didn't, we only just scratched the surface. We just I barely like. scratched the surface. So, but but thank you again so much. It's been a pleasure, and yeah, thank you guys. All right. it'd be awesome. But Love it. filming in progress, everybody. Peace. Peace.